Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Accutron with the Accutron Legacy Blue Day Date. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com at a full authorized dealer. So in this video, we'll go through an overview of this timepiece, look at some things to consider at the end. And also throughout this video, if you have any further questions, check out the link in the description to the product page where you can purchase the watch, see more information and book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. Towards the end of 2020, Accutron launched a collection of vintage inspired models that featured designs from their 1960s and 1970s catalogs. Their new legacy collection is a series of interesting, if not eccentric designs that really capture the essence of Accutron during its heyday. Now, while Accutron is mostly known for their space view and the closely associated tuning fork movement, this collection highlights some mostly forgotten references. Today, each of the models is supplied with Swiss-made automatic movements rather than the electronic power plants these pieces originally used. And that's really a paradoxical approach considering that during the 1960s and 70s, Accutron was on the precipice of ushering in revolutionary electronic timekeeping technology. Nevertheless, the new legacy models are limited and offer up some of the most interesting looks of any vintage inspired models on the market currently. Today, we're gonna take a look at this legacy automatic day date based on the Accutron Q, which is probably one of the more complicated and perhaps more interesting of them all. Taking a look at this legacy model on the wrist, you have a elongated oval case with measurements of 34.5 millimeters in diameter, 40.5 millimeters from the lug to lug distance, and 12.9 millimeters thick. This overall size makes it easy and accessible to nearly any wrist down under 15 centimeters and up, probably up to 18.5 centimeters just to give an estimate. However, there is a worry that on a larger wrist, this watch could get a bit lost. Although I do feel that this watch has a visual presence that's slightly bigger than 34.5 millimeters, aided in part by the unorthodox approach to the case. Now there are some fascinating design elements to this case, starting with the lugs, which are short and have a nice downward turn to them as they reach the strap. The case actually extends out over and above the strap while simultaneously getting thicker, initially pitching up towards the crystal, but then quickly beveling back down when it actually meets that crystal. The architecture on display here can only really be noticed and appreciated from the profile view of the case, Overall, the watch is undoubtedly retro in its execution, but probably in a modern context, it's going to have a bit more of a dressy appeal. To accompany and enhance this quirky design is a combination of brush and polished finishes. Nearly all of the surfaces to the case are polished except for the surface closest to the crystal, which is done in a vertical brush, which you can actually see the brush strokes. Because the crystal is circular and the case is oval, the brush finishing is more pronounced along the sections of the case near the lugs as it follows the shape of the case. Sticking with the general quirkiness of the case is the placement of the crown at the four o'clock. This is a really small push-pull crown and is tucked to the case, which makes accessing it a bit of a chore, to be honest. There is a very small overhang on the bottom side of the crown with some patience and a fingernail. You can pop it out, but it will take quite a bit of time to get used to. I don't necessarily have the largest of hands either, so this probably is not gonna be the best choice for somebody that has maybe a little bit more difficulty accessing these style of crowns. Also with this crown system, you're getting 30 meters of water resistance, so generally avoiding water is in good practice here with this piece. The crown does operate in typical fashion, hand winding at the first position will change the day date at the second position and then adjusting the time at that farthest pulled out point while stopping the second hand in the process, so hacking seconds here. Between the 18 millimeter lugs sits a genuine leather navy blue strap with contrast white stitching. It is secured to the wrist with a compact butterfly deployant, which is easy to use and will allow this watch to come easily off the wrist when needed. Transitioning back to the front of the watch, we have a large dome sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating, which provides an unobstructed view of the dark navy dial within. More interesting quirky features are found all over the dial, starting with the applied stick Roman numeral hour indices. Small square luminous plots are located to the inside of each marker with the exception of the Roman numeral 12. Moving to the center of the dial, we find polished stick hands containing luminous treatment and a thin white sweep second hand. 
The loom for the hands is decent, but the loom plots on the dial don't really glow particularly well, especially compared to the hands. In terms of printing on the dial, it's limited to the thin minute track that runs along the edge of the dial surface, the Swiss made designation at the bottom of the dial, and to the borders of the day date windows, which we'll highlight in a moment. The Accutron logo is applied to the dial at the nine o'clock marker in a high polished copper finish, which sometimes gets lost on the dial at certain angles. But saving the best for last, we have these really incredible trapezoidal day date windows. In addition to their shape and size, the placement and alignment on the dial is also pretty unusual. At the 12 o'clock position, you have a larger day window, and at the six, you have that shorter but stockier date window. Displayed in these windows are silver discs that have a nice metallic texture to them to really complement the blue navy color of the dial. The day wheel has letters that taper down in size, and with this effect, really does add to this 1970s look. But really what makes this approach to the dial even possible is the movement on the inside. Now flipping this watch over, we have a partially exhibition case back with some designation to the limited edition production numbers. But then from there, we can also see the exposed balance of this Salita movement within. So this is going to be a modified Salita movement and is kind of a creative approach around modifying this day date function with an SW200 or SW220 and allowing it to be fixed in a different location compared to the traditional approach. So in order to do this, we're actually customizing that day aperture to be vertically set and the disc inside in order to execute that properly. But apart from this, this is a pretty straightforward architecture. As mentioned for all of these legacy collection models, they are gonna be using Swiss made movements and Salita has quickly kind of elevated themselves as probably number two in the industry behind ETA in terms of production. In terms of the operation here, 28,000 800 vibrations per hour, 4 hertz, does feature hacking and hand winding, and a power reserve here of 38 hours. So now to unpack looking at this Accutron Day Date Q. So in terms of this entire legacy collection from Accutron, there's a bit of a spectrum in terms of the appeal. All of them are going to have some retro design influence from them, but this is one that's going to lean very far in that direction as well as being a bit unorthodox in its approach. With that as a byproduct, I think this is going to be a bit of a limited type of consumer that's going to go in the direction of this piece. But when it lands, I would say that it's going to land and stick to landing well, because this is very different compared to what you're going to find on the market in general. The day date execution is very different, but well executed at that and fits the overall format of what this piece is going for. In terms of wearability, this is gonna be a smaller watch, no question about it. It's one of those watches though that the dimensions don't necessarily tell the entire story. The format of this piece and the style of this piece almost tells more of a story and demands a presence in itself outside of just the overall dimensions, if that makes any sense. It's just when you have an approach to designs that's so steadfast, sometimes speaks for itself more than the dimensions. Movement on the inside is pretty straightforward in regards to what it's doing with that Salita base, but also getting some nice modifications in terms of being able to have some creativity on the dial. Overall, I would say this is a pretty cool retro style dial and approach in terms of its case, but certainly not going to be for everyone. But if you want something with some, I would say contemporary wearability, but also looking to the past in terms of design and just want something that is different than what most people would have on the wrist. Maybe this is just gonna complement a rather complete collection or it's just a way to kind of show off your quirky, fun attitude. This would be a watch to add to the list. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That's a great way to help out the channel and I would appreciate it as well. Also, if you're in the market for this watch, it's available on teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we carry. So if something goes wrong, you're completely covered. In addition, we also offer price match. So if you see one of our watches for cheaper at another AD, fill out the product form and then we will be in touch with you. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into the content that we're creating here, as well as on our main channel as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.